So I hope you guys are good. Um, we have a really big show today and we've got a really, like I hope it's not too long, but it's, um, it's a big show. So I think we'll um, jump right into it and sort of get going um, relatively quickly. Um, and I'm gonna try something new today. So um, I'm just really hoping <laughs> that it goes well. If everything goes to pot, I'll just um, uh, stop recording and like we'll go back to our regular format. But uh, I'm hoping that it works. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, it's something new and I did it myself after Mike and I set everything up last night. I went back in and did it myself. So I'm just hoping that it goes well. Um, how is everybody? How are you guys all doing? Um, this is episode 86. We are live streaming on December 14th of 2017. This will be the last show of Woolen Spinning for the year. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for all of the support over the past year. You guys are the ones that keep the show on the on the air a month after month. You guys are the ones that um, tell me that you like what's coming to you. You help me to improve the content. You help me to direct the content. And I just really, really appreciate that you guys are here and that you continue to support the work that goes on here um, week after week, month after month. So thank you. Thank you especially to the Patreon supporters. There has been a lot of drama the past week around Patreon. I'm sure that you guys have heard about it. There's been a lot on the national news in the U.S. about Patreon and I just really hope that you guys um, have um, sort of been able to sift through all of that. The long and the short of it is the fees will not be changing um, and it will be sort of as it is going forward. So drama aside, um, there will be no changes for, for the new year at patreon.com. So um, that aside, um, I want to welcome you, wish you happy holidays. For those who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. For those who celebrate Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah. And for those who have other holiday traditions at this time, I hope that you're with fam family and friends and loved ones and are enjoying good food and just celebrating how however you choose to celebrate. Um, our kids are pretty excited. They're, um, um, getting pretty not wound up about Christmas, but they're definitely looking forward to it. They're at the age now where they know that there's stuff coming and they know that uh, Christmas is coming. They know there's there's things happening. They're not totally sure what it all is because they don't really remember Christmas from previous years, but they're definitely kind of aware that there is stuff going on. So, um which is kind of neat. We're kind of at a fun age. We're also at the age where they're really excited to give gifts to other people, which is really fun. Um, James made this big, it was like eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, printer paper. He, he pulled it out of our printer and it was, so it was just a regular piece of paper. Um, and he filled it with all of the gifts that he wanted. So he made all these boxes and he put all this stuff in it. And Mike and I were like, Oh, okay. And so I said to him, you know, um, there's a lot of kids in the world that aren't going to get anything for Christmas and you know they or they're maybe only going to get one thing and you know it's it's really not necessarily about the presents and the gifts and what's under the tree and he looked right at me he said I know mom I don't mind if I don't get this stuff I just hope that we all get something <laughs> I was like okay that's pretty awesome <laughs> so um I hope that uh the season is um you know full of, of joy for you and your family. Um, we have a Patreon giveaway um, because this is the only show for the month and it, it, I am planning it sort of on being a little bit longer than normal because we've got lots and lots of stuff to do. Um, the Patreon, the monthly Patreon draw is the calendar. Um, I actually have one right here. You guys are very quiet in the, in the pop-up chat today. There's not a lot of chatter happening. Um, so every month throughout the year 2017, um, I have been giving away these calendars and there's all sorts of photos inside and um, somebody, and every month I've been drawing a, uh, a, a winner um, from the Patreon people who support the show. Um, so this month it's actually going to Linda in Abilene, Texas, um, who is also, um, WIP Fiber Arts, um, works in progress. I'm assuming, um, WIP stands for. At first I read it as WPI and I thought it was wraps per inch fiber arts. And I was like, oh, that's very clever. And then I saw it was WIP and I thought, oh, that's clever too. Anyways, uh, Linda, I'll be popping this in the mail for you. I have your address. So do not, um, you do not need to send it to me and, um, congratulations. Um, 
we have a whole bunch of giveaways to do and I'm not sure if I should do it now or if I should do it at the end of the show. Um, why don't you guys say, do you want to do the Zero to Hero giveaway now or at the end of the show? I'll wait for you guys to tell me. In the meantime, um, there are going to be some changes here at Woolen Spinning in 2018. Um, the monthly sort of show and the format and everything isn't really going to change. That's all going to stay the same. Um, however, for um, the month, um, I've kind of chosen an, um, like an overall theme that I sort of wanted to focus on for the whole year. So for the 12 months, um, I sort of, you know, did some brainstorming and wanted to figure out what I sort of wanted to focus on for the year. And I chose the word rummage, which is sort of a funny word, but um, I really wanted to spend the year sort of rummaging around and um, really getting in to the nitty gritty of some of the stuff that we do as hand spinners and sort of, um, you know, really rummaging around and, and um, looking at the details and looking at some of the stuff that as hand spinners we sort of gloss over sometimes because we just want to do a default spin or we just want to, um, you know, not really think about it too much. We just want to sit down at our wheel and I thought like, let's really get into that and let's sort of um, rummage around in that. So um, there is going to be a, a big blog post um, coming out. I think I've got it scheduled for next week or the week after. I'm still working on it. Um, that goes um, sort of through a bunch of the stuff um, around what some of the changes are and what, what we're going to be focusing on in 2018. We're going to be doing themes. I talked about this a little bit last show. And um, if you want a video of some of the rundown, um, please head over to my YouTube channel. It's um, the Patreon support for 2018 video. It's the one that's on the landing page of YouTube. So when you land on my YouTube channel, um, the video is right there and you can press play. Or you can go to patreon.com slash pearls and again, the video is right there front and center. Um, and I just talk about some of the stuff that I um, want to change some of the things that are coming, some of the some of the new things. And I'll talk a little bit more about that sort of throughout the show. You're going to see some um, things that I'm going to mention um, as we go on that'll give you some ideas of what is coming. So check, watch for the blog post, wellforpearls.com, and watch that video if you're interested in some of the stuff that's coming. Um, you guys want to wait till the end for Zero to Hero. That's totally great. Um, I have five prizes to give away. They're all pretty awesome. So, um, and I did random number generator last night. So I'm just going to rally them off um, and show you what I have to give away. And I'll, we'll do that at the end of the show. Thanks to Eve for uh, speaking up. The other thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is um, the Falala Cal. This is with um, Carrie of Glow Beauty from Within. She wanted to uh, partner with me for um, a knit along. I don't want to lose my stitches while I show you. Um, she would like to give um, a skein of her yarn away to you guys. So all you have to do to enter is head over to her um, Etsy shop and I will link it in the show notes, um, which it's Glow Beauty from within um, on Etsy. Um, Carrie is um, just a prolific spinner. She started dyeing yarn. Um, she's got lots going on. And uh, I've been working on this. I, I have a set of her um, uh, mini skeins and I chose birch for my main color. Anyways, if you guys would like to um, win one of her skeins, she'll send it to you directly. Um, just head over to our Etsy shop. Tell me what your favorite colorway is. Pop that in the episode thread for December 2017. Just say, I liked blah, blah, blah. And um, Carrie will send you a skein of yarn and we will finish that We'll give you guys a week. So I'm hoping that this is going to go up tonight and um, we'll um, draw a winner at the end of next week and we'll pop that in the mail to you. So maybe next Thursday we'll, we'll uh, choose someone. Anyways, I really like how this is turning out. As you can see, I, it's a it's a cowl, a knit along, but I'm actually crocheting and I chose the um, Sunday shawl. And you know what? I can't remember who wrote the pattern, um, but it's a it's a really popular um, pattern on Ravelry, and um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm learning a ton because I'm learning all these different um, stitches, and that is something that I um, am really enjoying because I don't know a lot about crochet. I'm not great at reading crochet patterns, and this has been really enjoyable. So I'm going to finish this up hopefully by the end of the month. I'll show it to you um, hopefully the first show in January and that is that knit along so and the link for that is in the um, Ravelry group wool and spinning 
and you can follow along or you can join in. Um, it, we would love to have you. I think that is all for housekeeping other than the Zero to Hero prizes. So the only trick with us doing it at the end of the show is I have to remember to actually do it. So please don't let me forget. Um, what do you guys want to talk about first? I have um, breeding color studies. I have um, my Pacific Spirit Spin. I have a work in progress and I have a finished spin that I just finished this morning and has a funny story attached to it. Um, and then I thought I'd show you some of my non hand spin spun knitting just today because I've got a couple of um, gifts that I can't post on the internets because my brother and sister-in-law will see them. Um, they're for my niece and nephew and I can't share them. So I thought, well, I'll share them with you guys because I know that they don't watch the podcast. So um, they don't want to hear me drone on about hand spinning. I don't know what's wrong with them. So that is that. So what do you guys want to start with? I'm, I'm happy to do whatever. I'm going to have some water in the meantime. My throat is dry. I, um, I've been going to the gym super early in the morning at like 5.15 in the morning which is wonderful and I, there's an awesome group that goes um, but it um, I find if I don't drink enough water by about this time of the day I've got a bit of a headache and I know it's because I'm up early finish spin awesome Katie thank you okay um, so this is kind of <laughs> this could have been a disaster I'm gonna switch the cameras around all right so let me switch cameras we'll see if this works and um, this, okay, so this is the Sweet Georgia Club for December. Um, so it's for this month. This is the last Sweet Georgia Club colorway. Um, Felicia decided to um, finish the club. She uh, is going to move on to some other stuff. I know some of what's going on because I have a little bit of behind the scenes um, knowledge from her just because I'm a we're a good friend I'm a good friend and um, she's confided a little bit so there's some exciting stuff coming from Sweet Georgia but in the meantime she decided to let club go um, I'm sad to see it go to be totally honest like I was really um, I, I love every month that we get pushed out of our comfort zone to spin some different stuff but I also really recognize that um, it's probably time for her her to move on and to do other things so she named the December Club um, it's called hibernate and uh, it was a it's uh, 7525 uh, BFL silk um, and she recommended spinning singles I'm head over heels in love with these colors and just don't want much mixing or blending to happen here normally I might consider doing a Navajo ply chain ply um, but recently I've been feeling like it produces a yarn that is just too thick for what I want. I've been thinking about weaving with hand spun singles and think that that might show off the color and drape of this fiber beautifully. So I'm eager to spin this into fine soft singles. Um, how would you spin this? Let us know. So, um, and the colorway is called Hibernate. It's called Hibernate because... Um, I'm not even going to read it. It's a big, big, long paragraph. And basically, it's talking about plunging into new projects quickly and creating a wake of yarn swatches, glitter, and fiber dust wherever she goes. Winter comes, and now it's time to rest. Time to do a clean sweep, relax into my favorite things, and enjoy some comfort. How will you hibernate this winter? Um, so this was basically like a very straightforward spin. I spun it probably in about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, I spun the singles a little bit thicker. I did spin them quite evenly. I split the fiber um, um, vertically. So I took it lengthwise and I split it this way. Um, and I only split it five times and I knew that that would give me slightly thicker singles, but I ended up with um, 380 yards, which isn't bad. Um, and it just, you know, the colors are really pretty. I mean, you guys can see it. The, you know, the colors are pretty. The magenta purple um, and the blue, they were actually quite, I thought they weren't very dominant in the braid, but they actually were. They really take up quite a bit of space in the braid. So the brown and the cream um, sort of gives the, the fiber, the finished yarn some depth and some texture um, without completely um, losing the blues and the magentas. Um, 
because they really are dominant. And it'll be interesting to see how this knits up. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, it is still a little bit wet, so I'm, I'm not going to move it around and gum it around too much because I almost, I don't know what happened. I didn't do anything differently. Um, I finished the singles just like I normally would. I take my potato masher and I kind of, you know, agitate the water and it moves the the fiber around enough and the yarn and around enough that it, it felt it folds it quite nicely. I didn't bother plunging it into a, an ice water bath or cold water or anything because the last couple times I haven't done it and I've really liked the results. It fuzzes it up a little bit rather than creating um, a smoother singles. So I just did it in the hot water with the soap and then I went to pull it out and check this out. Um, I'll see if I can find the section. It looks horrible. So all of this in here, here, let me turn it, let me turn it around because it, uh, you can't really see. All of this in here is all like, it really did felt like it it sort of got like tangled up and wrecked. Um, I don't know why it's so bad this time round. I don't know if it was particularly active in that section and it just kind of went a bit crazy, but it really got sort of um, gummy. And um, it's kind of too bad because I'm not sure, it's still wet, so I'm, I'm trying not to touch it too much, but it really um, got quite... I don't know, quite, quite roughed up. So it'll be interesting to see when I wind it if I have to cut this section out or, or what, because I've never, ever, ever had this happen before. So, and it's just this one section, which is really strange. So it's probably about like, you know, three inches um, in about a dozen strands. So it'll be a pain when I'm knitting with it if I have to actually skip over this section and not use it. And if I was weaving, the only good thing is once it's dry, if I weave with it, it'll pull it straight and it'll be fine. But it's very strange. That is never in all my years, I've never had that happen. So that was very, very strange. Um, I do actually have some video of me spinning this yarn. So let's see, this is my new thing that I, <laughs> that I set up without Mike, so we'll see if this works. Um, because I was quite proud of myself for being able to do this. So I'm gonna lose you guys for just a sec. And um, I, am I am hoping that this will work, work and you guys can watch me actually, actually spinning, spinning the yarn. yarn. Um, so, so I, you'll, you'll notice that my hands are quite far apart. Far apart. Um, the, the spinning, spinning I, found I found with the BFL, I find with BFL, BFL set when I'm spinning singles, the farther my hands are apart, the more even and consistent the yarn is because then I can, I can really just tug back and just smooth. Um, as soon as my hands are too close together, I find I tend to tug a bit too hard because my hands are too close and it doesn't create a consistent yarn. Um, and, and my, uh, uh, I, the, the other trick, trick that I use is I actually often will spin singles with one foot. So I will treadle with one foot because that forces me to slow down. Um, it's a great trick if you have a double treadle wheel and you find that you get spinning really, really fast and you tend to not be able to slow down, even if you use a higher ratio like six to one or four to one, um, you may find that it is helpful to just let me switch back. Um, you may find it's helpful to treadle with one foot. So um, I hope that's helpful. Um, and that was kind of fun. That actually worked. Ah! <laughs> so I'm just going to have a look at some of the comments here so that you guys can see. Have I done singles with a sing similar content of silk before? Yes, which is why it was so weird, Becca. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we all have problems that happen every time, every so often, Eve. Yeah, absolutely. Anyhow, so that's how I spun this yarn. And um, the funny part of this and the funny part of the story is, um, so because I finished it so um, early in the day, because I finished it, I was spinning it while the kids were eating breakfast this morning at seven and I finished it. So I was like, oh, awesome. I can show it on the show and I'll get it dry. So I um, hung it up on a chair in front of our gas fireplace and I cranked the gas fireplace to like full, full heat. Mike is like, what are you doing? Anyways, it's, it's almost dry. Like it's pretty amazing how once the fan starts going, how hot, like how much heat comes off of it. And, um, 
and like it's almost dry it's probably 90 percent dry so that's pretty good i mean it's a little bit damp to touch but like that's that's pretty good so um, if you want to get your yarns dry quickly and you have a gas fireplace just put them in front of your gas fireplace and they will dry i'm sure going off on a lot of tangents today thank you for sticking with me um, I feel like there's just so much to talk about because I haven't um, streamed in a while and I haven't podcasted and uh, you know it's all of that right so this is what's this colorway called Pacific Spirit this was the Spinzilla colorway for oh shoot does anybody remember it was a uh, it was for 2000 and so this was 2017 Spinzilla was it Spinzilla 2016 I think um, and again, it's Sweet Georgia, because I've always spun with Sweet Georgia. And I thought, I, th I thought for sure this would be done, um, by today, and it's not. Um, I just could not get it finished. It is taking so long to spin this, and I think a lot of it is that I'm spinning lace weight singles. Um, they are quite, um, they're quite fine. And this is um, one of the lace bobbins from Magicraft. I have a lace bobbin. Uh, I bought the lace kit and I talked about it last episode in episode um, 85. And um, I really like these little bobbins. They are really cool. And I've been spinning some cotton on my other little bobbin like this. And I'd actually like to get a couple more. I really like them. I don't know if the full four ounces is going to... Um, fit on the bobbin. I was really hoping it would, but we'll see. Um, but this is all that's left. So I have, what I've been doing is slowly unbraiding it. That I've not really spun like this in the, in the recent couple of years. I don't even think I've talked about it on the show because I haven't done this for so long. I'm actually unbraiding the braid as I spin and I'm spinning across the top, which I haven't done in years. So um, I think my camera is frozen. Let me just um, see. There we go. It seems to have frozen. Now it's unfrozen. There we go. Is that working? Yes, that's working. Sorry, the cam the DSLR freezes every so often. Um, so, um, so yeah, I've been spinning um, across the top here, and um, as I get to the next colorway, like color. Um, uh, portion of the braid I unbraid the next section so um, so once I get through to about this is almost done the teal is almost done so once I get through to finishing the teal um, I will unbraid this back here pull this out and then spin through the green and so on. I haven't done that for a really long time. It's not a technique that I particularly like because I find I'm always looking for a place to put the braid which I know sounds crazy but there's they're floppy and they're annoying and um, I've been kind of jamming it into my like the bend in my hip because there's nowhere really for it to sit and actually I've been really thankful to Katrina for her um, I have one of her spinning aprons I have one of the first prototypes that her mom uh, did you often see me wearing it in the teaching videos um, and the how I spin content I'm often wearing it and I found that because it has those big side pockets and I put the braid in there and it kind of sits in there which is better but um, yeah I find spinning straight from the braid is really annoying um, Beck is asking does it affect does it keep does keeping it braided affect how you draft um, no uh, because I've just been spinning short forward draw um, but I have found the good thing about it is because I knew I wanted to spin across the top um, It's kept the fiber organized. So um, because this is superwash BFL I knew if I unbraided it and started spinning from the top that by the end it would be really fuzzed up and It just wouldn't look really nice anymore because the superwash fibers They they just don't stay nicely aligned and nicely organized um, If they're braiding against anything or if you're moving them around or constantly like, you know, um I don't have anything here to show you, but if you're constantly like, you know, um, not wrapping them, but you know how like you'll loop them around and then you'll like hang it on your wheel. Um, or like in your case, Becca, you're spindle spinning. So you might wrap it around your forearm. I find with superwash, um, the more you do that, the more the fibers, it just gets fuzzier and fuzzier. Whereas if I leave it braided, it remains organized. And then if I only unbraid it in those sections as I get to it, it's just keeping it nicely aligned and nicely organized. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, 
So anyways, that's that spin. I can't believe it's not done, but it's not done. So I'm going to keep working away at it. And I'm hoping that in January I will have to show it, have it to show you the, it's the second to last spin of mine from, um, spin the bin. So I did not finish my bin this year. Wah, wah. Um, it, I just ran out of time. Um, I just didn't have, it just didn't get done. So I was a little bit bummed about that. Um, this one is almost done. I'd say it's like 85% done. And I have um, uh, my other one, my yarn ink, was uh, a 100% merino that fold quite badly when it was dyed. And I was thinking about taking it out of my bin and not doing anything with it, but I was hoping to get it at least done, whatever I decided to do. Recomb it, recard it, whatever. Anyways, those are the two spins I didn't get done, and the yarn ink one will not get done before the end of the year because of us traveling for Christmas. So it's a little, I'm kind of sad about it, I have to admit. I, I wanted to get it done, and it's, it's, not, um, it's not going to. So that's kind of a bummer. Um... 11 out of 12 braids though to get it done for this year is pretty good because uh, I've done a lot of spinning this year. I've done a lot of big projects too. Like I did the, I can't even remember now. I've done a few big spins. So say lovey. Um, this sock, my Into the World socks. I finished one. Um, it's quite long. <laughs> the cuff is really long. I finished this sock at work. And I am almost done the second sock. I am turning the heel. I I almost got it turned at work the other night. And then um, unfortunately we got a whole bunch of overdoses in. And I couldn't knit for the rest of the night. Nobody got breaks for the rest of the night. It was just insane. So this is um, the other sock. So I just have to finish turning the heel. I'm halfway through. Oh, did you guys notice that we have new cameras? <laughs> um, I had told you guys in the Slack channel that we we're going to be new cameras, but I um, I don't know if you guys noticed. I don't know if you see any difference at your at your end. Maybe you don't. Um, anyway, so this is halfway done. This is Into the World. It was um, eating grapes off wallpaper. It was a colorway that they did in the um, completely twisted and arbitrary group. What's that? What's that? Uh, completely twisted C T A. Completely twisted and arbitrary. C I think it's just CTA. They call themselves um, the CTA group on Ravelry. They do um, quarterly spin-alongs and they invite indie dyers to, um, they generate a whole bunch of photos and um, they, um, the indie dyer picks one of the photos and then they die based on it and Into the World I think chose like two or three photos to do a whole bunch of different colorways. So I ended up buying two of them and this one I spun and the other one I haven't spun yet. So this is Superwash Targi. I did a, a, a fractal three ply, I think. I'm gonna double check because maybe it was a traditional three ply that I did. I spun it back in 2000 and, um, oh my goodness, when did I spin this? I talked about it on the podcast. 2015 oh yeah 2015 August of 2015 um, I ended up with 370 yards um, from 122 grams is three ply and I spun it on my Hanson mini spinner when I still have that had that and I think it must have been a traditional three ply because I didn't write anything else I didn't say whether it was um, um, a fractal and I would have if it was a fractal I would have said it was a fractal so yeah it was traditional three ply and um, yeah it uh, it turned out really really well the yarn I wasn't sure about the yarn when I started knitting I was wondering what it would end up looking like but I love how this sock is turn turning out like I really love what these socks look like and I made the cuff a little bit longer so that it would um use up more of the yarn. I'm still going to have a lot of yarn left over, but at least then I'll have some for mending and darning just in case these don't um, stand up. So funny story, um, my husband asked me for new socks for Christmas. So I've done a couple of um, hand spun socks for him over the years. I think I've done a total of three pairs of hand spun socks for him. And um, he said to me last night, he's like, did you make me socks for Christmas? And I said, mm, do you want to know the answer or no? And he said, yeah, just tell me. I said, 
no, I was going to give you yarn for Christmas and I was going to knit you commercial socks. And I said, like, is that okay? And he said, yes, because he's put so many holes in all of his hand spun socks that he feels so badly. <laughs> so I said to him um, not to worry and that I would knit him a pair of commercial socks and I'd do him a couple of more over the course of 2018 um, because um, he doesn't pay attention to where he's walking and we have um, separators um, in quite a few of our rooms that because of carpet and his socks and I am careful to step over them and he just doesn't pay attention and so the little nails have gotten stuck and that's what keeps putting holes in his socks so I said to him that I would do him some commercial socks. So um, these ones will be for me. I'll finish these up and then I'll do him a pair. Um, probably while we're gone, um, I'll knit those up for him. So he felt really badly because they, uh, they keep getting holes in them. And I, I think he just doesn't want to feel badly when he knows they're hand spun and hand knit. Um, and I can whip up a pair of commercial socks pretty quick because I generally knit my hand spun socks at a smaller gauge and a much tighter gauge. So um, just so that they'll last longer more than anything. I'm not very hard on my on my socks, but yeah, we're going to be delving into socks in great detail um, in the last quarter of 2018. So anybody who's interested in delving into the world of spinning and knitting for socks, um, that is one of the um, themes that we're going to be looking at later in the year. We're going to really rummage around um, in the world of sock spinning and sock knitting. So for those who are feeling a bit um, intimidated by, about spinning and knitting for socks, I really encourage you to um, ha, you know, stay um, nearby and uh, we'll be starting that in, I think, October um, and we'll rummage around in hand spun and hand knit socks through October, November and December of 2018. And I'm really looking forward to it because I have four projects that I have been planning for eons, four. And I keep putting them off and I keep putting them off and I talk about them really quickly on the show once in a blue moon and then I say I'm going to start them and then I don't. Um, so one of the first projects that I'm going to work on um, when we get to the fall is um, some hand spun Suffolk that I've been dying to spin. I'm going to do um, probably a two ply long draw and when the yarn is finished I'm going to take it over to Katrina's house and I'm, I'm going to ask her if she can help me dye it because I have an idea of what I want to do and um, I, I don't want to um, dye the fiber because it's in roving form and I don't really like dyeing roving but I'm going to um, spin the yarn and then I'm going to take it over to her house and I'm going to ask her to help me and we're going to dye it all up and that's one of the projects I've had on my list forever probably since 2015 like the beginning of 2015 because I bought some of that Suffolk way back then and my friend Greta who you guys will know from the Slack channel she's back to basics on the Slack channel um, her and I both have um, a, a bag of Suffolk that we've been wanting to spin and I still haven't gotten to it. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm just going to look quickly in the chat channel and make sure I'm not missing stuff that you guys are saying because I'm just chatting away. Um, does your new camera have a wider lens? So um, it doesn't, but I changed the settings on the... Um, live stream so that where I am down here in the corner is a little bit bigger um, so that you're not just kind of seeing a close-up of me and I am no longer um, using a webcam so that's the biggest change um, if you saw if you go back some of the other episodes um, you'll notice that there is quite a difference with the webcam versus um, what my setup is now where I've got proper cameras um, which is good. I'm, I'm really glad about that. And I, um, I'm looking forward to, um, playing with them a little bit more and seeing how I can play them off of each other so that, um, when we get to live streaming all the shows, every episode, um, it'll just be the way that things are done, which is really exciting. Um, Another question from Katie, have you had experience with all natural sock blends? Um, I have some coming soon that's a blend of English Lister, Perindale, Coriadale, and Down Crosses. Oh, very cool. Um, I do and I don't. So a lot of my uh, sock yarns have our superwash because we have two big dogs and we have two children under five and I need to be able to put my stuff in the washing machine. I do try to source my stuff, stuff from North America um, which is hard to do, but um, so far I've been able to get um, a few things. 
I also have sort of stuck to the down breeds because I can put them in the washing machine on a cold water wash and lay flat to dry and they for the most part haven't felted. One pair got felted by accident. They were my most favorite socks ever. Um, they were, it was my fault. I threw them into a warm and cold water wash and even laying them flat, they, the damage had already been done. So, um, I do have on my sock spinning list for, uh, 2018, a, um, alpaca blend, which I'm really excited about. I'm wondering what that's going to spin up like and how that'll spin up for socks. So it's, a uh, it's got silk in it and, and a little bit of alpaca. It's got quite a high ratio of alpaca. I think it's like 20%. Anyways, we'll have to uh, all compare notes in the Ravelry group and on the Slack channel and see what we come up with. Um, and I love the idea about making your own blends. I think that's a great idea. Um, so you guys will be able to kind of, you know, delve into whatever you want to do through that three months and we'll just play around and compare notes. I think that's just fantastic. Um... Oh, Eve, good, good, uh, good idea. If you felt socks in the washing machine, would putting wet sock block the wet socks on blockers help? I don't know. These ones got these were my Cheviot socks, and they I can actually still wear them, but they're more like as house socks now. But that would be interesting. I wonder if I got them wet and I threw them on my blockers if it would stretch them out enough that I could wear them again because they're not that badly felted. They're more like really badly fulled. So I don't know. We'll have to see. I will try that though, and I will report back. I will tell you, there's a product on the market that is supposed to reverse felting. In this case, products like that do not work. Um, I talked to the CEO of that company because um, way back I had posted on Instagram about a pair of socks that got felted and that that stuff did not work. I wasn't expecting it to work. It was a 100% wool. Um, he said that, that their product um, is more for um, cashmere, um, any hair that gets fulled or felted, so cashmere, um, alpaca, that kind of stuff, where there isn't any scales and they can sort of realign, and for superwash blends. So I'm not really sure what he meant by superwash because theoretically superwash can't felt, but I have heard about superwash that's very gently superwashed. I've heard of it fulling, and I think that that's what he meant. So, and you're, we're talking about commercial items, um, items that you would buy commercially, not. Um, some of the stuff that we're dealing with because he said the knitting community in general have not responded to his product well and I think a lot of that's because you can't unfelt Cascade 220. It just doesn't work. So we had a big conversation about um, the properties of wool and, and like why a product like that wouldn't work. Him and I emailed back and forth and again this is like two years ago because Mike's socks got ruined like two years ago. Some of you might remember some of that because it was I talked about it on the show and I um, uh, talked about it on Instagram. I think it was way back when I first joined Instagram, I feel like. So, um, I think that is, oh, color and breed studies. I almost forgot. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, breed and color studies. So I finished, um, this is the content for how I spin for January. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because I want to do a recap in, in March. And I also really want you guys to have an opportunity to, um, look at stuff, look at the braids of fiber and look at what Katrina did, um, how she dyed stuff and make your own decisions without me um, influencing you too much um, because I don't want you guys to spin stuff just because you see me do it a certain way. Um, I really want you guys to um, do stuff the way you want to do it as well. I'm just going to get my camera to focus a little bit. Um, there we go, that's better. Um, so this is combo drafted and uh, it turned out really well. This I wound this up because I did do a little knitted swatch. I'll flash these for you, but these are for the How I Spin content for January, like I said, and I really go into detail in that content. There's a PDF download with that content and I talk about um, how I, you know, uh, some reflections on the swatches, how they swatched up, um, what they look like, um, how the yarn knits up, how the yarn weaves up. So that's a little teaser for January. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yarn. I have a plan for all of my color and breed studies for this set. So I'm going to do a combo drafted yarn. 
The next yarn that I'm going to do is going to be a combo ply. I'm not totally sure how I'm going to do that. I'm going to talk about all of this in the teaching content in January. So a little bit of a spoiler for you guys to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. Um, everybody who is a uh, Patreon subscriber will get that teaching content on January 1st. So you guys can all see what I am up to and how I'm prepping all of these spins. Um, and then in March... Um, I'm going to work on a whole bunch of three plies and my original plan with all of these yarns because I'm going to have five yarns in total when I'm done I was thinking about doing a Stephen West pattern and I was going to um, do a shawl and somehow work it out so that the, the colors would be sort of each would be um, showcased and now I'm not sure I just don't know um, I because I love the woven swatch so much so I might save all of these yarns and I might weave with them and do like a big stole I'm just not sure uh, I don't know if, did I mention on the show can you guys tell me in the chat channel um, that uh, I met Stephen West at Knit City back in October did I tell you guys about that so he is absolutely lovely <laughs> um, he's you know he's so flamboyant and there's so much of his personality out on the internet and I had gone over to the Valley Yarns booth to talk to my friend Kathy about some nursing related stuff because she works there part time and uh, he was standing there and he was just finishing up because he was um, signing he was doing a, 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 a sign a book signing and he had just finished so the crowd had kind of dispersed and it kind of gone away and uh, my friend Kathy was just saying goodbye and saying thank you and whatnot and um, he is a very gentle personality. I was really surprised. I absolutely love his patterns for particularly for hand spun and I've knit a number of them and I was really kicking myself for not bringing um, one of my shawls, one of my hand spun shawls to show him. And I've been meaning to email him just to say, don't bother emailing me back. I just want to let you know that your patterns are amazing for hand spun and for hand spun yarn and thank you for creating them. And I need to do that because now that I've told you guys, it holds me accountable. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was absolutely lovely and very, very humble and very, um, uh, yeah, just a lovely, lovely personality. I, I, I have to admit, I was a little bit surprised, and because um, I thought he was would be really, really, really outgoing. And he, there's a couple of people that walked up that wanted to show him what they had made, and he was so complimentary and um, very, very kind. So, um, yeah, big thank you to Stephen West for just being real and and uh, for creating the patterns that he creates. So. My hope was to do one of his patterns out of all of this yarn. That was my plan. But now I don't know because um, I really like the weaving. So I'm not sure what I might do. And then there's this other part of me that's like, I'll just get Katrina to dye these three braids all over again. And then I'll do one weaving and one knitted project because that won't make her crazy at all. And the only reason why I can say that is because she's not here today because she's working with her mom and they're doing a bunch of stuff. And uh, I know that she's got so much going on. <laughs> <laughs> that might tip her over the edge. <laughs> I say that with love. So anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I just absolutely love the results. So uh, thank you for your kind words in the in the chat channel, you guys. Because, um, yeah, just awesome, awesome yarn. I really enjoyed spinning it. And we'll talk more about Finn um, over the coming months because I don't want to completely take away from the content that's coming up in 2018. Um, let's do giveaways. Let's just give away all the things. Um, the first prize for Zero to Hero is going to go out to Holland. It's actually going to go to, uh, um, the Netherlands, uh, Holland. So this is four ounces of Ramboulet. Um, it is from a small flock in Ontario. It is four ounces. This came from Vicky, um, who is Songbird Fibers on Instagram. If you have not checked out her yarn, she's dying now. She used to be a member of our Slack channel, but I think she's just super busy. Um, she um, provided this for me as a thank you because she won quite a few prizes over the years from Woolen Spinning. She's obviously just really lucky and kept winning over and over. So she wanted to give back to you guys. So um, this is four ounces of undyed comb top from Vicky. And this is, like I said, it's going to Holland. It's going to Lisanne, post number 15. And I'm not going to try to say your Ravelry name. Well, actually, I probably should. Um, symbol Mine and T. Um, so Lisanne in Holland, this is going to you. 
and I will contact you guys. I'll contact everybody who I list and name. I'll, I'll send a note to you guys on Ravelry. So thank you to Vicky for providing this. If you guys don't follow Vicky on Instagram, let me see if I can find her. Um, please do. She's doing gorgeous stuff. I am a huge bird fanatic. Um, and I really just love what she's doing. So I hope that you guys will check her out. This is Vicky here. Songbird fibers, spelled the Canadian slash British way, F-I-B-R-E-S. And she can be found at songbirdsfibers.bigcartel.com. So thank you again to Vicky. That was very kind. And um, that'll be going out to you, Lisanne. Number, t oh, and she, oh, I didn't write down what you guys made. Shoot, I should have. And now I can't because it would take too long. Number two, prize number two. This came to me all the way from Slovakia. And um, big, big, big thank you. Um, there is a little sampler pack of fiber. And she, um, Susanna's sent. I don't want to open it because it's going to hurt me. <laughs> Um, I know it's kind of a weird thing to say. She sent carding cloth. Those, so if you know of somebody who would um, be able to um, make you a pair of hand cards, this is what you need. You cut it in half and you mount it onto two, um, two you know, hand cards and this would give you a pair of hand cards. I don't know what the TPI is. I feel like it's 120. It looks like 120, but I might be wrong. There's an email address here, so please don't hesitate to email her. She's absolutely lovely. lovely. And like I said, um, just really a lot of, like really fun to be able to give this away and totally different, which is really cool. Um, so it came from Slovakia and it took a long time to get here. Um, I'm just trying to see what the... Yeah, it doesn't say how, when, how long it took, but Susanna um, emailed me and asked me if she could give back to the podcast. She's a patron um, of the show and um, offered this up to, to somebody for a Zero to Hero, which is just amazing. So thank you to Susanna. And um, this is going to Jackie. Um, Jackie Ravilla is her is your Ravelry name, and you're in Oregon, and you are post number 20. So congratulations to Jackie for that. Um, and I will contact you for your mailing address. And thank you again to Susanna because that's just a really, really lovely gift to give. All right. The next giveaway is going to Tessa, who's here in British Columbia. Um, Tessa W. on Ravelry. This is a 100% organic Polworth. And this is from Colorful Eclectic Dye Works. And these colors are just awesome. They're gonna spin up very, very similarly to my Into the World socks because of that really um, brilliant neon. And then the darker purple and the darker blue. It's gonna be really, really fun spun up. Um, I would love to see this Navajo plied or I'd love to see it in a fractal. Um, I was going to keep this, but I just am getting a bit overwhelmed with my stash, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And um, I really wanted to pay it forward. So thank you to Jennifer for sending this to me and congratulations to Tessa. Um, the next thing is going to Becca, Betha Forty, um, post number 30 on Ravel Ravelry. She's in Glasgow. Hi, Becca. Um, you are getting... I have to root through my basket. <laughs> you are getting a spinner's control card. And you are getting, I think this is about 80 ounces of amethyst. Sweet George Yarns Amethyst. I spun this up for socks. I just finished my spin and I had this second braid and I wanted to pay it forward and um, send this beautiful purple home to somebody. So this is for you, Becca. And um, I will pop that in the mail for you. Congratulations. And our last prize is post number 22. It's going to Wendy in the UK. You are getting a calendar and a spinner's control card. Oh, the camera's not going to focus. 
There we go. Calendar and a spinner's control card, Wendy. You are WMCN on Ravelry, and that was post number 22. So congratulations to everybody. Those are big prizes, I feel like. Um, I've got a lot of mailing in my future. Um, I hope that everybody enjoys their prize. Thank you so much for participating in Zero to Hero um, for 2017. It was a lot of fun, and it was a big year. Um, everybody created amazing things. There were some big projects that people finished. There were multiple sweaters. Um, sweaters, there was a number of shawls. Um, there are some big, big projects. So thank you so much to everybody who, uh, who participated. Um, the, what I was going to say about Zero to Hero for 2018, we're not going to keep it going. We've done it now for two years in a row. Um, and I think that, um, that's kind of enough. Um, we There wasn't a lot of uh, direction this year, but it was something that was ongoing that people were working on. The hashtag on Ravelry was used quite a bit, hashtag Zero to Hero 2017. I'm just ready to kind of be done with Zero to Hero because um, I'd like to create some more specific uh, threads in the Ravelry group for specific things that you're working on. So sort of... Um, kind of like mini zero to heroes. So uh, you know, a thread for people who are doing haps and shawls that already exists. That's the hap along. That's an ongoing along. Um, we have, we're, I'll start a sock along. Um, that'll be for people who wanna do hand spun socks, want feedback on socks, and then we'll delve into that even more deeply um, later in the year, which I've already talked about on the show. I'll start a sweater along for those who want to spin and knit sweaters. There's already a hashtag sweater spin in the Slack channel um, for those who don't know that it's there. But um, we'll start one in the Ravelry group as well. And then those who are working on sweaters can kind of um, encourage one another and um, give each other help and whatnot in there. Um, I think it's just when you're working on these big projects and you've got fiber um, and you're going from the fiber to the finished object and you're working through it and you've got all those hours at the wheel and then all those hours of knitting, it's nice to be talking to people who are doing the same thing. Um, I spun this yarn, this is the sweater pattern I picked, but now it's not working, what do I do? Um, and people who are working on sweaters as well, maybe there's some knowledge there around what they've done in the past or what they've done that has worked, they can pass that knowledge along and it can just be a little bit more um, tailored to what you're working on and your needs. Um, and then there's not sort of that general make something from fiber and knit or spin it um, or you know knit it afterwards or, or weave it or whatever and it's just a little bit more focused down and you guys can really utilize one another and the resources that you offer one another because everybody has such a lot of knowledge even if you feel like you don't you really do and we all have lots to share and even some of the mistakes that we make when we're still beginning it's amazing how much of that is is helpful um, to share and to to give back so um, that will be set up in the Ravelry group over the next couple of weeks. And um, I did talk about that a little bit in the Patreon support uh, video for 2018, just to give you guys kind of a rundown on what's coming up. Um, that's sort of more what that video is. And um, you guys can sort of get, um, you'll sort of see more of it coming up in the Ravelry group. So do make sure you're in the Ravelry group. We hit a huge milestone in the Ravelry group. I think we're over... I know we're over a thousand members now, but I feel like we're getting close to, yeah, we're over 1200 members now in the Ravelry group, which is incredible and insane. So thank you so much to those. And it's an active group too. Like I check in every day for at least five, 10 minutes. I don't always, um, I don't always have a chance to comment or to reply, but I always look at it every day and every day <laughs> there's posts. I'm always like, oh my goodness, like one day, I think I left it for, like, I missed a day because I wasn't feeling great or the kids were sick or something. And I came back and there was like 50 unread messages. I couldn't, in different threads. I couldn't believe it. So you guys are very chatty and I love it because you really support each other and you really help each other, which is awesome. Um, my projects that I've been working for gift knitting. So this is for my, my niece, uh, Claire, I did a similar toque for Nora for Christmas for this fall. Um, it was in a different colorway. This is the um, oh shoot, I can't remember now. Let me just really quickly check. Um, it was in the I think Baya Electrica colorway. I think is this one. Oh no, this was Lotus, and then Nora's was in the Baya Electrica. 
colorway. So it was the bright pink, bright purple, and then I put the purple pom-pom on. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen it. And if you follow me on, on Ravelry, don't ever hesitate to friend me on Ravelry, by the way. I will always friend you back. And um, you, unless you have like super... Um, offensive content, which on Ravelry, most people don't. So I will always friend you back. And if you look under friends, under the friends tab on Ravelry, you can click on one of the tabs on the upper right hand corner that says friend activity. And you can actually look at what the, your friends are making and what they're posting for their photos. Um, so if you follow me there, um, if you look at that tab ever, you would have seen the one that I made for Nora. Um, and Katrina was lovely enough to take a couple of photos of Nora for me, which was awesome. So I've got some beautiful photos of her. Anyways, I liked the toque so much. I thought it was super cute and I've had a lot of compliments on it. And I knew my sister-in-law would love one for my niece. Um, so I made one for them for Christmas. So I put a white palm on it. I was going to put a black one on, but Claire's like me. She's very fair. And I thought the white looked a little bit nicer. So that is what I made for my niece for Christmas. And this is what I made for my nephew. So my nephew is 18 months and I had a bunch of leftover yarn and um, I striped it. So this is Patton's color wool um, and it, I didn't have enough of this colorway down here and so I striped it through the body of the toque and I think it actually made the yarn. Like I think it actually really like created just an awesome, oh, the battery. Um, I think it actually created a really great yarn. Um, I think it really made made the yarn, if that makes sense, or made made the toque. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. I haven't photographed it yet, but I will. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, I think that's everything for today. I feel like now my the one camera is telling me that the battery pack is going. So um, which I think is interesting, which is interesting because it's fully charged. So. Um, does anybody have anything else they needed to say today? I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a really Happy New Year. I hope you're surrounded by friends and family. Um, please hop into the Slack channel if you're a Patreon subscriber or if you, uh, or hop into the Ravelry group and um, chat, you know, get to know people. It's a very welcoming group and um, I hope that uh, you guys have a chance to do that over the holidays. So if you've been kind of not sure and a little bit overwhelmed by the chatter that um, happens in the in the Slack channel, don't be. Just jump right in. Tell us what, what you're doing and where you are and trust me, you'll be welcomed. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas.